So if you bought a GoPro recently or you've had one for a really long time and you feel like you wasted all your money on it because you cannot create good videos, then I can assure you that I have definitely felt the exact same way when I first bought my GoPro. But after using it for a really long time now, I have figured out that it just takes the right settings to make amazing videos. So in this video, I'm going to be talking about all of the settings that I've been using for the last few years now to make really amazing videos, how you can set up your GoPro for success for Instagram specifically and also how I edit them. If you're new here, my name is Eli and I am a scuba instructor and marine biologist and I like to make videos about those kinds of things. So if you're interested in that, definitely check out my channel if you haven't already. But talking back about the GoPro. So I have had a GoPro. I've been using one for almost 10 years now. I've had one for a very long time since the GoPro Hero 5 Black. Um, about 10 years ago, but in this past year, I've been using it pretty intensively for my work. I worked as a scuba instructor and also as a marine biologist, so I literally use this thing three to four times a week and I played around with the settings a lot until I found some that I really enjoyed using. So going through these settings. So at the bottom of your GoPro screen, if you've got the GoPro Hero 9 and around those GoPros, you're gonna have this um, option right at the bottom of the screen where it says standard or whatever other setting that you've got on and you've got three different things there. So the first number there on the left hand side of those settings is going to be the resolution of the GoPro. So what I like to have as my standard resolution for GoPro videos, for underwater videos specifically, I like to use just 1080. I use my GoPro videos for Instagram and I also use it for YouTube. So I find that the 1080 resolution is just fine for what I wanna use it for. The higher resolution you go, the more SD card space it's going to take up and it's also going to be a little bit harder on your computer and your phone, whatever you're using to process that. So just take that into account if you wanna go into a higher resolution. So now talking about the next setting on here, you've got the frames per second. So what I like to use for my standard frames per second for underwater video is actually quite high. I like to use 120 frames per second. So the frames per second just means how many shots that your camera is taking for every single second. So the more that you take, the more slow you can bring out your videos with them still looking really smooth and natural. So that's why I like to keep my frames per second really high at 120 frames per second because I can have the option to slow it very much down if I want to. So this is really beneficial for underwater videos because if you were to slow things down to half speed, it's still going to look very natural. Things move slowly underwater anyway, with humans, with fish, with everything underwater, it usually moves slow. So if you move it down to half speed, it's not even noticeable that you have done that. And this is really nice to have that option if you have taken a video and you were very excited or maybe you didn't have a GoPro mount and it's really shaky. So if you smooth it down, slow it down to half speed, you now will have a much smoother video that looks a lot more professional. And so you'll even have another option to slow it down again, another half speed down to one quarter speed if it is super shaky and there is just, it looks really bad. So if you've filmed in 120 frames per second, you can slow it all the way down to one quarter speed to make it super slow and the smoothest possible shot with what you have. I really love this option when I've had a really exciting encounter with something underwater or just a really just active moment underwater and I'm moving this thing around a lot. If I filmed in 120 frames per second, I can slow it all the way down and have a super, super smooth, super nice result. And I can also draw out that footage into a lot more content because I can make it so much longer. Uh, so it's really nice to have that 120 frames per second option. So you can move it even higher if you want to, to 240 frames per second, although that is gonna take up 
double the space and 120 frames per second is already really large. So just keep that in mind if you change it even higher. If you move it down to 60 frames per second, you'll at least be able to slow it down a little bit. and It'll take up a lot less space, but I think 120 frames per second is really nice to have. So now talking about that last option there on the bottom of the screen, the camera angle. So the lens that I always like to use for video, especially for underwater video, is the Super View lens. So this is the widest possible lens that you have. And the reason I really like to use that for underwater videos, especially on reefs, is because most often when I'm filming a reef, I really wanna capture as much of the reef as possible to get as many colors and shadows and bits of the scene as possible. When I am filming something a little bit more up close or I know I'm gonna film something a little bit more up close, I'll switch it down to the just the wide angle or the linear, but I tend to find that I still really love how the footage turns out when it's in the super view or wide angle lens so those tend to be the options that i stick with for the most part for basically all of the videos that i take so those are really just the settings that i use i very rarely actually take photos with my gopro but um i haven't really messed around with it enough to give some really great recommendations for it but as far as the editing for your gopros I really only have a few very brief tips about the editing process. What I really love to use for putting videos into Instagram from your GoPro is literally just using the GoPro app. So the uh, things that I like to do when I've, after I put the photos into the GoPro app is I like to go to the filters and I always love to apply the dive specific filter to my videos. So unfortunately you can only use this filter if you are a GoPro Plus subscriber. So um, that is a little unfortunate, but it is a really, really nice uh, filter that just color corrects really, really well. And most of the time I don't even do anything more than that. I just apply that filter and it just looks so much better. And sometimes I'll go to the individual settings and I will drop down the exposure a little bit and up the contrast. But other than that, that is really the majority that I do with my videos for Instagram. I may make a future video touching a little bit more on how I edit my videos, but for now, those are my best tips, just to keep it really brief. If you found this video useful, definitely make sure to give it a like and consider checking out my channel and subscribing if you haven't already. If you're interested in scuba related content like this, definitely make sure to check out this playlist. I can never remember which side it's on. But otherwise, thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.